Hello all, welcome to video 2, this is hack of the day and in continuation with the last one, in this video I'll show you how to customize shell code for fun and profit. This free video is sponsored by Security Tube Trainings, so please have a look at our different training programs. And if you like any of them, you're most welcome to become a student. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken another shell code from shellstorm.org and this one says remote file download, right? However, there's a small catch as in you can well understand if you want to use this, you would want to configure the remote file uh, probably which would be very different from what the shell code author would have put. And this is really what is going to be the goal of this video is to understand, analyze and modify the shell code so that you can put your own remote file in there. So let's jump right into our setup. Now this is really the same page. What I'm going to do is I'm just copying out the shell code. And I'm going to use my C file, which is a very common template used to execute and try shell code out, right? So if I try to run this, uh, and we'll analyze it as well in just a bit, you'd notice that it tries to fetch basically HTTP 4As, right? Doesn't make any sense doesn't seem to be a valid URL and fair enough. This is exactly what the author tells you. He says, hey, change this, right? And this is the part which you would need to change. Now let's break up the whole process into a couple of parts. Let me first go ahead and analyze this shell code. Uh, right, so I like Intel disassembly, so let me set it and basically the variable inside which stuff was there was code so I can just set a breakpoint when code would be hit and I can run my program in here it's a symbol and here it is right all the way up to this part in here right so this is the whole code we have hmm. So basically, let's go ahead once again, as I said, uh, you know, many of the manipulations and modifications done here is actually to save space so that you have lesser number of opcodes in there to make the shell code more compact. Now, it wouldn't make any sense for us to trace through every instruction uh, because basically it's just a bunch of pushes and moves. Let's look at the state of the different registers when we are going to invoke the syscall. So of course the syscall we are invoking and all of that stuff, right? So let me create a breakpoint in here for plus 37. Let me continue. There we are, we've hit the breakpoint. Let me first figure out the syscall which we are trying to invoke 11, right? Hmm, 11 is actually exec VE, just as we've seen in the previous video. And just to jog your memory, the first argument to exec VE is actually the address of where file name string is stored in memory, and that's in the EBX register. So let's look at what is it that we are planning to run here. It's user bin wget. Okay, fair enough. I think which means we are relying on the wget utility to download the file. And the arguments to wget, right, this is what the URL would be, would be in argv, but argv is an array of pointers, right, containing the different arguments. So let me go ahead and first, uh, go ahead and dump, let's say four double words pointed to by ecx. Right. Okay, so it looks like we just have one argument. This of course is uh, the address of where the file name string is stored in memory, which is right here. 
So let's look at the argument which we are sending. This of course would be a string as well, so we could print it directly. Four A's, right? Doesn't make sense. It's not a valid URL and hence we are having all of these little issues in here. Okay, so which is really the place where this is happening, right? To locate that, I think the easiest thing to really do is figure out the hex values of these little four bytes in here, which is 61, 61, 61, 61. And here you go, right? So this push instruction seems to be responsible for pushing in the URL. And that's exactly what we want to play with. Okay, so let's basically now do the following. I'd like to modify shell code, right? So let me copy this out. And guys, there are a billion ways to probably do this. This is just one way. So please, please <laughs> don't flame me if you probably know of a better way. Uh, on the contrary, you should actually post it in the comment section. And uh, there are tons of ways, right? To be honest, you could have used so many other utilities to do this. Okay, so let's call this fix code dot nasm. Actually, you know what? First, what I would need to really do. Uh, yep, I think fix code dot nasm would just sound fine. We paste this in. Okay. Okay, now let's put this into final.nasm. Let's open up final.nasm. Let me actually make this a file where we could feed it to an assembler to make modifications. Okay, let me use NASM create the object file fantastic now what we really want to do now that we verified that you know we've kind of pasted everything properly is to replace this right and if you notice this would need to be replaced by a series of pushes uh, which would end up actually pushing our URL on the stack, right? So let me go ahead and push the same URL where the code is so that we can just download that as an HTML file. And I think we have to go ahead and figure out the hex equivalent button reverse, right? That's how the pushing happens. For this, I think I just use Python and shameless self promotion. We have a fantastic Python class, uh, which I'd highly recommend. If you can, you should take. 
Okay, now I'd like to reverse the URL because you need to push in reverse direction because you're pushing on the stack and then you would want to give it as argument. Okay, so reverse is the reverse string. Now I'd like the hex equivalent of it. So I could just do a simple encode hex. There we are. Now I'd like to create push instructions with this, right? So here we had rev underscore hex. So let me do a little bit of Python magic in here. See if I'm doing this properly. Python really gives you the power to do like things really fast. And four bytes together would actually mean eight of these together, right? So this would really mean into eight. Oops, I need to give this in here print push 0x item looks okay let's see what happens okay there we go ton of pushes I think we could have avoided the uh, HTTP if we wanted and by the way in this case we are lucky that we are uh, totally rounded off as a multiple of four bytes or else we just have to do some more uh, rearranging of stuff. Anyway, so we come back in here and I replace this statement with all of the stuff which you've just kind of pushed in. Right? And I again go back, create the object file with NASM. Let's use object dump and ensure that there are no nulls in this. Looks fine to me. Now to convert this into shell code, there's actually a little shortcut which we could use. Just makes life a bit more easier. And by the way, you don't need to convert this into an actual exe. You could even feed the object file, object dump knows how to work with it. Here is our shell code now, definitely larger in length because of the length of the URL. Now let me paste this in shellcode.c. Compile. Let's run this. Hopefully my internet connection is up. Okay, now if you notice it says shell code length 112, shell storm and there you go, right? It's downloaded it. And if you open up shell code blah 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 dot PHP, you actually go ahead and get the whole file which you are looking at. Fantastic. Right guys, so this is really how you can analyze existing shell code, see what it does, figure out what needs to be changed, and then quickly change it. So, as usual, comments and feedback, that's the only thing which keeps me going. Uh, post any questions you may have, you know, others help out as well. And if your question is really good, I might take it up in another video. Also, please post other scenarios and ideas you would want. And, of course, uh, anything else you guys may have in mind. And if you're interested in low-level stuff, then... I already offer the Security Tube Linux Assembly Expert course, which includes Linux assembly and shell coding. 
and I think I have over nine hours of videos starting right from the start which is if you don't know anything about assembly nothing about shell coding you should still do great with this course view the course page I put up sample videos for around an hour and see if you like it that's all for today guys see you bye bye